The Caribbean island of Puerto Rico is home to three million American citizens and a handful of anti-American terrorists. On August 24th, 1978, two Puerto Rican patrolmen encounter what appears to be a stranded couple. They stop to help. Suddenly, three heavily armed men rush them. One patrolman tries to draw his gun, but he's immediately shot and killed. The other patrolman surrenders. The attackers force him into the woods and order him to remove his uniform. Then bind him to a tree with his own handcuffs. Back at the road, the couple attempts to disguise the patrol car so they can drive it to a hiding place. But before they can finish, headlights approach. The man holds up the dead officer's badge. He tells the men in the car to move along. It's a police matter. But the men in the car identify themselves as undercover cops and offer to help. The man urges them to leave. Instead, they grow suspicious. At a safe distance, the cops pull off and radio for backup. They arm themselves and head back to take on their attackers. But when the cops arrive, they see no one. Wary of an ambush, they secure the crime scene. After searching the area, they rescue the handcuffed patrolman and find his partner's body. Five days later, a previously unknown terror group claims credit for the assault. Since the attack was claimed by a terrorist organization, the investigation falls under the jurisdiction of the FBI at the federal building in San Juan. Agents study the group's letter to the media, which includes diagrams allegedly showing what occurred. The group claims the patrolman overreacted, forcing them to kill him in self-defense. FBI Special Agent Rick Hahn. We thought it was very odd that they claimed credit for this incident, particularly since the police officer was killed. But the uh, communique was detailed and, in fact, included a graphic drawing of uh, the events as they claimed that they had occurred. And I think that they felt like they had to justify the fact that the officer had been killed. This new terror group calls themselves the People's Puerto Rican Army, or EPB in Spanish. Their stated goal is to turn the U.S. Commonwealth into an independent communist country which is contrary to what the vast majority of Puerto Ricans want. Those who wanted total independence were less than 5% of the island. So the representative uh, numbers amongst the population uh, that are in, in sync with the terrorists is a very small handful of people. The letterhead includes the group's nickname, Macheteros. Macheteros actually comes from uh, the machete workers, the, the uh, blue-collar people, basically, of the island, uh, who they're claiming to represent. I think that they chose that name primarily to identify themselves with the unskilled laborers, the workers of Puerto Rico, the native people who would have been subjugated into things like chopping sugar cane. Agent Hahn reviews the evidence so far. Police recovered empty 9-millimeter shells, but no useful fingerprints or fibers. Sketches of the suspects proved to be too general to be of much use. With no real leads to go on, the FBI decides to watch several militants who preach violence, hoping they will lead them to the Macheteros. The police take a different approach, encouraging informants to infiltrate militant groups. Well, the police of Puerto Rico, having lost one of their own, are extremely uh, focused on trying to resolve this. And they are recruiting young people and putting them into what they consider to be uh, radical organizations on college campuses to try
try and ferret out who may be part of the Mach Terrors. Two months pass as the FBI and police continue to search for leads. Then, in October 1979, the Macheteros strike again at the U.S. Customs Building in San Juan. A high-powered bomb explodes. Fortunately, no one is injured. The symbolism of the Custom House is that it uh, represents the U.S. government's presence there in Puerto Rico. Everything that uh, comes imported into the island comes through the Customs House. In a letter to the media, the Macheteros take credit. In response, the FBI and police intensify their efforts. A month and a half later, at the Sabana Seca Navy base near San Juan, 18 unarmed Navy personnel ride a bus on a routine trip to work. A vehicle stops ahead, blocking their path. A van pulls out and begins firing on the bus with automatic weapons. They fired right along the black band on a typical school bus, which is right about, about where the floor level is, so that uh, even individuals that would be hiding on the floor to try and uh, get cover would have taken rounds through the side of the bus. The attack kills two people and wounds nine. Agent Hahn coordinates the investigation. This attack was so audacious and so brutal that it clearly upped the ante in terms of uh, what the terrorists were willing to do to the government personnel on the island. This was the first out and out planned homicide and that's clearly what this was. So it clearly upped the ante. Agents collect shell casings. They run the VIN number on the abandoned vehicle and find that it was stolen months earlier. They also check for fingerprints and fibers, but find none. The attackers have left no clues. The media receives a letter from the Macheteros proudly claiming credit. 